So our, um, our article was from the Journal of uh, Positive Behavior, Behavioral Interventions, and it was uh, Interventions and Support. So for short, we're going to shorten it and say SWIBIS. And that was Becky's idea because she's so busy. So our objectives are to give you a brief overview of SWIBIS, um, give you the manuscript evaluation, and we're going to give you a little demo that I think everybody's going to enjoy, I hope. And then we'll tell you if we accept or reject this article. Okay. So I'm going to give you a brief overview. It's kind of interesting, actually. Um, this quantitative paper actually came out of some research that stems all the way back from 1977 when um, school psychology had a public law 94-142 now the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, and that's when um, school psychologists started doing evaluations for children with, children with disabilities, and they started to really become the gatekeepers, so spending like two-thirds of their time doing assessments for children. Then in like 1989, there, was a, there began the first incidents of violence with school children, where five school children in California were murdered in a playground. So from that, um, things have changed a lot in education, and um, now school psychologists and everyone are having to focus on positive behavioral interventions. So it's really interesting because the aim of this article actually was to focus on helping the staff learn things that would help them change their behavior, which in turn would change the behavior of the students, which I thought was really profound. And I've seen actually play out with my own daughter in middle school. And then the second aim, and Becky, you maybe can speak to that, is the with the universal um, goal of, uh, I'm spacing it a little bit, but to um, change the behavior through positive interventions. So with that, I'm gonna turn the purpose over so long story short, so this is basically um, we teach kids how to shoot a basketball when they cannot make a basket. We teach kids how to do math when they cannot teach math, or that they can't add. Um, but normally we punish kids when, when they misbehave. So the SWIBIS is basically saying recognizing good behaviors and rewarding those instead of punishing their poor behaviors. But anyway, no, okay. So the purpose of this study, there has been previous research done on the effectiveness of SWIBIS, and um, but there's been nothing that's done long term. So the purpose of this study was to um, do a long term effectiveness study on the SWIBIS training. So the SWIBIS is actually there's a universal model that was developed um, <clears throat> with the No Child Left Behind Act. And, and a little bit beforehand, but that's kind of where there's a universal training model for uh, instructors and how they can implement it in their, in their programs. The authors that are involved with this study are all um, associated with the Department of Mental Health, the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, and they all um, also have backgrounds with the um, John Hopkins Center for the Prevention of Youth Violence and they do research in um, behavioral studies. So that's kind of the background of the authors. Okay. Okay, as far as the literature review, um, the one thing missing um, from this research and very uh, important to understand is there were previous studies that were done um, in 2008 that looked at staff perception of the schools organizational health health after doing this kind of prevention or intervention. And there were studies done on the reduction in students' needs uh, for and the use of school-based counseling. So did they use it and um, and how much were they using it? So there but there was no longitudinal studies uh, study trial on SWIBIS effectiveness. So that's where Bradshaw, Mitchell, and Leith uh, detailed the origin of, of SWIBIS by referencing the increased emphasis on accountability for student achievement. So again, you know, making children more accountable, um, like we talked about in No Child Left Behind. 
and discipline problems, making sure that you know we're dealing with uh, discipline problems in a different way. Uh, contributions, the CDC actually and the uh, National Institute of Mental Health funded this this uh, research, this particular longitudinal studies. And as far as literature, um, uh, there were very a lot of promising effects. Oops, I'm going into you, Becky, actually, I think. And you're good. Okay. So results from previous short-term randomized and non-randomized research from 2000 to 2008 revealed promising effects after implementing the universal SWIVIS model, specifically in the areas of reduction, reduced behavior problems, and higher uh, academic outcomes. So um, we could, we're going to talk about that a little bit more later, but as far as like being referred to the office or in school suspensions, that kind of thing. Okay. Methodology and method. So that's the literature behind the study. The methodology, they did a longitudinal group randomized um, study, a uh, long-term controlled effectiveness study. And the reason it was um, a group randomized is, again, as we mentioned in previous lectures, you can't uh, randomize certain classes in a, um, or student, certain students in a class. You kind of have to do the whole group as a whole. So, and it was schools that were trained, not classes. So that's more quasi-experimental. Um, but they did pre-intervention, so before they did the training, they did an analysis of the programs, and then every year after that, every May, they did a follow-up analysis on the effectiveness of this training. Um, and then the intent, they also, um, initially the intent was to compare pre- and post-test scores on standardized math and reading science, or math and reading um, standardized exams but uh, that state standardized exam changed throughout the course of the study. So instead they just compared third graders and fifth graders to the control schools. The population sample, um, they, it included 37 Maryland public elementary schools. They were, it was a diverse uh, set of students and it, there was suburb, suburban and rural. Um, and it was from a variety of districts too as well. As far as the data analysis goes, um, the analysis studied um, the implementation fidelity, so how well the SWIFT model was implemented by the faculty. So they studied that, and it, there was a trained observer who uh, studied the effectiveness, and there was also the staff that self-reported the effectiveness of this training. Do you want to talk about how many schools were randomized and how many oh, controlled? Yep. Of the 37 programs, there were 21 that were randomized to the SWOPUS training and uh, 16 that were assigned to the comparison groups. So um, the implementation fidelity was studied and then there, were, there was also um, uh, what they were looking for was the office uh, disciplinary referral, so how often was a kid sent to the principal's office. They wanted to see that rate go down. They also did um, suspension rates and then also academic achievement. Those are all studied. Um, let's see, author writers recognized um, that there was some, in order to do the, uh, to truly report the, o, the office discipline referrals, which I would just call ODR from now on, they had to be trained in the SOBIS training, so that wasn't really effective. So they, with the ODR referrals, they just looked at it um, at the office, or at the SOBIS training programs. As far as instrumentation goes, the SWIVIS, the programs that were uh, randomized to the SWIVIS training, they all had to go, um, they had a specific two-day course that they were trained in, and then they had follow-up every single year. They had kind of boot camp training, and then they would have um, once monthly uh, so that they would continue to implement what they were trained <coughs> as the faculty goes. Um, and then the, the control groups just did kind of their care as usual. They didn't train, change their normal program. As far as instrumentation goes, um, it was consistent as all SOBIS schools were required to attend extensive detail-oriented training camps with the annual two-day summer boosters. And that's what I already talked about. So we'll go on to the procedures. <laughs> <Good>. Sorry about that. <laughs> so data collection was done each May, and then they did it 
through a school-wide evaluation tool, and that was um, the trained observers that just watched how well the school implemented it, and then there was also an effective behavior support survey, which was the school faculty that reported on, um, it was uh, a unit, uh, not unanimous, anonymous type of feedback, and, um, and, and the responses were kept confidential. So that's how they collected the data, was um, A, through the assessment uh, academic achievement, and then also through trained observer uh, response, and then uh, the staff faculty or feedbacks. And you talked about the school, the SCT. Yep, that was the trained observers. Great. And the faculty, school faculty. Great. Okay, so in regards to findings, we're trying to keep this interesting for you guys. I know it's kind of a new so hopefully, um, this is okay. Uh, the findings of the research were presented for the implement implementation of fidelity and student behavior outcomes in ODR, um, the suspension rates and academic performance. Analysis were conducted in SPS 16.0 using school level data. And what all that is, is a predictive analytic software. It's not anything like terribly fancy. Um, there were six of seven subscales uh, of the SET survey demonstrated that demonstrated improvement. So they, they showed a lot of improvement uh, after the SWIBIS training, as did all four subscales of the EBS, the other model, as well. So there was a lot of improvement there. Um, consistent with data presented, student outcomes uh, indicated a mean well below the national average for ODR. Suspension rates fell significantly more than the comparison groups, and they were slightly high up, higher, however, not statistically significant. And we kind of talked about that a little bit as we're you're looking at this research and you're saying, you know, even though they were lower, they weren't statistically significant um, in the academic outcomes. So, um, you know, there were still great achievements in that piece. Uh, and the data was presented in a manner consistent with previous research findings because as I mentioned they were looking at other things as well so this is really came out of a national push. In conclusion. Yes. So the authors um, detailed the study uh, results and the, uh, the implementation quality and sustainability as comp compared to the control groups. They also accounted for any possible sources of data contamination, and they were still able to conclude that the Swiss school schools implemented um, the intervention with great fidelity. So as long as they were trained well, they actually held to it, and they um, implemented it in their schools. As far as student outcomes, the authors recognized a downward trend in ODR events um, and suspen suspension rights. However, um, the schools that they surveyed had very low levels of suspension rates and office referral, dis disciplinary referrals. So they kind of felt that the, the minimal decrease was due to a floor effect, meaning that um, they were already so low they didn't really have much further to go. Um, the no authors did note that further research on that ODR referral or rate could be done at schools that do have a lot of disciplinary problems, this um, potential to see how effective this with this training would be. And is it like one kid who got... And that was the limitation of the suspension rates, is that they just documented how many suspensions there were, not was it one kid that had five or five kids that had one. So that was another little limitation of the study. And then finally, no significant st or statistical significance was reported on academic achievement. However, the SCOBIS trained schools generally outscored scored the control schools. Um, and then as previously noted, pre and post test uh, results were not published because the, the test changed. <clears throat> the data does support the conclusion um, that the authors claim any potential variation um, or test contamination was accounted for and recognized and reported as a potential area for further investigation. Additional behavior development and character education programs like DARE, um, something like that, could also contaminate some of the other uh, schools, the control schools. Um, so that that's a, um, another area that I guess could have contaminated. But they implications? For. Did you implications? Is you implications? Is you. <laughs> okay. 
So a strong partnership between research and the state and the district agencies was a big part of the success. I think if you can't um, if you can't get the state and the district agencies to work with you, uh, it's very hard to just have it implemented in one school. It, ha it really has to be everyone. So um, they really contributed to the success of this with this implementation and compliance. The, authorized, the authors recognized this detail and also referred to district funding um, as a source of variation in the successful implementation. So it should be noted that because of strong support from the state and community agencies, um, the results might not be practical, practical for institutions with little outside support. So if you were going to um, replicate the study, you would have to get the same kind of support from the district and the agencies. <laughs> All right. And as far as the written presentation goes, the quality of the, um, the writing, the organization, organization, it was done in very logical sequencing, an easy to follow format that can be applied to any type of research article. Um, major headings could be applied to the, the research articles and the subheadings are more specific to the study. Um, all keywords that um, were in there were defined or abbreviations were spelled out at least. Um, tables and charts, they are easy to understand at a glance, and they are explained in detail under the results. So we're pushing the easy button. Yes. <laughs> and so, we did adhere to the APA. Yes. Okay. So now, we would like to hear from you about rejecting or accepting this article. And maybe we gave you a little bit of bias by saying some of the stuff I said. <laughs> Whether or not it should be accepted or not accepted. I would accept. I, yeah. We've got some to do. It sounds like a more or less purpose that you would accept it. There's so many variables for that kind of topic that I don't think you could get much more accurate than right. what it did. So Justin, what did you think? Would you accept this? Well, I would accept it. I would like to see it in a place that actually had higher incidents prior so you can actually see more of a, a change to know that it was that, that was what happened. An actual good example, um, after Jen and I had worked on this on Tuesday, my mom is on our local communities. She is like a community board for a new principal that's being um, going to be hired, and she was, she was interviewing them. And one of the instructors had, or interviewees, had mentioned this with this training, or the positive behavioral interventional support. And so when I was talking to mom about it, she goes, what did you say? <laughs> and she's like, that was what one of our guys had mentioned. And along those lines, the reason I even mentioned this to my mom was because my nephew is six today, and tomorrow his sister is one. And there's a birthday party for them on Sunday. Well, they have, in his school, they have bulldog bucks. Their, um, their mascot is a bulldog. So if Zach would get caught with a clean desk or helping somebody with the door without being told, or maybe in the lunch line, his teacher would give him a bulldog buck. And then that could be redeemed later for maybe erasers or stickers or something, you know, a dollar. Well, I guess this teacher was um, getting rid of some of her kids' old toys, and she brought in a Nebraska football helmet. And Zach saw that and was like, OMG, you know, I gotta have this. But it was 50 bucks. And so he was saving up his money for a long time. Well, then his teacher brought, I don't know if you're familiar with the American Girl dolls, or the American Girl, she brought in a crib that was an American Girl crib, and it was 50 bucks. And Zachary got that for a birthday present for his little sister <laughs> instead. So, but I'm just like, I know. Cry. <laughs> his little brother probably would have taken the helmet and broken the crib, but one of them is going to be okay. <laughs> but anyway, I just thought it was really cool that this correlated very strongly to my um, to real life. Yeah. So we have a little model to do for you guys that would have been done like in a school where they would have decided um, what characteristics together, what characteristics are they looking for. And these happen to be star characteristics, which we've done in my daughter's in the middle school. Um, show strong character, think I can succeed, act 
safely, respect myself and others by respecting all opinions and ideas, and helping when I can. So we wanted to do a little something special for you guys and say that educational research students strive to do these star characteristics. So I'll let you talk because you did such a good job with Justin. Um, well, hold, hold on a second. 